Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Though jet engines proved to be a massive leap forward in terms of aircraft speed and power, the flammability of modern jet fuel and the complexity of these engine systems makes them a significant fire hazard. In the event an aircraft crashes or catches fire on a runway, most airports and military bases have firefighters and high-tech crash trucks on site. In some cases, these crash tenders are operated by the city. In others, they will be under the direct control of the airport. As with any other fire, speed is the primary factor in how much damage a blaze can do. When an aircraft malfunctions in midair, ground crews can have crash tenders already standing by. When the fire or crash is unexpected, first responders will immediately drive out to the affected plane. While the flight crew shuts down the engine and prepares for evacuation, firefighters will use foam or water-based fire suppression agents to extinguish the fire and cool down the engine. At the forefront of the battle against engine fires and other aircraft-related issues is the modern crash tender. These specialized vehicles are equipped with advanced firefighting and rescue equipment to handle various types of emergencies, including situations in which multiple people are injured. Though they vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, airport crash tenders are typically large, robust vehicles with at least one high-capacity spraying mechanism. These vehicles often carry a variety of firefighting agents, including water, foam, dry chemicals, and specialized gels. The choice of agent depends on the type of fire or emergency being addressed. Foam and specialized gels are commonly used to suppress aviation fuel fires because they can form a seal around the blaze, preventing reignition. Though the U.S. military has many air bases with their fleet of crash tenders, The same can't be said for more austere locations or remote air bases. U.S. pilots, ground crews, and maintenance personnel are well trained in how to deal with disabled or damaged aircraft. These men and women are stationed at Kadena Air Base in Okinawa, Japan, they are receiving instructions on how to use a wheel dolly to move a disabled aircraft off of the runway. Regardless of what caused the aircraft's problem, it's essential that the runway be cleared as soon as possible so as not to pose a risk to any other planes that might still be in the sky. All aircraft fires are dangerous. However, military planes often carry weaponry and cargo that can pose a significant risk if a blaze gets out of control.
to ensure that firefighters are able to address these problems as quickly and efficiently as possible. Military installations like Pearl Butte Air Force Base in Florida will hold frequent crash exercises and drills. During such events, firefighters will be informed of a mock blaze and be asked to address it just as they would the real thing. This means loading into the fire trucks and crash tenders and driving across the airfield to the crash site. In many cases, this site will include a mock-up of a downed aircraft, sometimes nearly as large as the real thing. These drills might also include special fire behavior training systems, which are essentially controlled gas burners and fans used to simulate fire behavior. The most authentic of these simulators can replicate the spread of fire, heat release rates, and smoke production. Allowing firefighters to learn how fires develop and react to different firefighting techniques. Fortunately, crash tenders allow firefighters to engage the blaze inside the vehicle. minimizing the risk to the various personnel. However, these men and women often need to disembark the crash tenders and fight the blaze on foot. This is especially true of situations where large amounts of fuel have caught fire, necessitating multiple angles of attack. Firefighting technology is continually growing and advancing. The United States military spends millions of dollars annually to ensure its teams have access to the latest and greatest tools, vehicles, and anti-fire agents. In 2014, Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico became the first to receive a P-34 Rapid Intervention Vehicle. Despite costing far less than a traditional fire engine or crash truck, this multi-purpose vehicle is up to 3.5 times more effective. This is mainly due to its 500-gallon tank and ultra-high-pressure turret. This UHP apparatus allows firefighters to extinguish fires more quickly without using as much water. As with most crash tender models, personnel can typically stay inside the vehicle during this process. However, in the event of a particularly challenging blaze, firefighters can also use a pair of 200-foot hand lines to attack fires from the side. Uh, it doesn't have a thousand gallons, that's 400 gallons, but what it does have and it uses is smaller droplets of water, kind of like a pressure washer. And all that water comes out of here. Now that comes out at a high rate of pressure where you're going to use tiny droplets and it's going to use that pressure to drive through the heat and get towards the seat of the fire. Of course, not every aircraft related fire takes place out on the runway. In some rare cases, a fire may start inside an airplane or helicopter hangar. Potentially putting billions of dollars of equipment, as well as numerous lives at risk. Many military hangars are equipped with special foam suppression devices to prevent this from happening. 
these ceiling-mounted systems utilize special foam agents and delivery systems to create a foam blanket that suppresses the fire and prevents it from spreading. Most of these systems use specially formulated foam agents that react to water. As soon as the suppression device is initiated, the water will begin flowing, dumping thousands of gallons of foam into the hangar, effectively suffocating the flames. As effective as these foam systems are, they must be properly tested to ensure they meet the standards necessary to put out a hangar fire. This test was conducted in 2015 at Fairchild Air Force Base in Washington. It used a silhouette of a large aircraft placed on the ground to determine how much area the foam might cover in an actual fire situation. According to the technicians, the test would be considered a failure if the foam system failed to reach at least 90% coverage. The foam also needed to reach a certain height, three feet, in under four minutes. Aircraft hangar fire suppressing foam systems are typically equipped with fire detection systems that use various sensors, such as heat detectors, smoke detectors, or flame detectors. Once a fire is detected, the foam system is activated either manually or automatically. The strict four-minute benchmark exists to account for any time lost between when the fire ignites and when the foam begins. Though typically very reliable, there have been incidents involving fire suppression foam. For instance, in 2014, anti-fire foam accidentally spread over a wide area at the Oklahoma Army National Guard base in Tulsa after a test of the base's alarm and safety system. Not only did it completely fill the hangars, but it spilled out onto the tarmac, burying nearly a dozen Black Hawk helicopters. Though it took quite some time to clean up the spill, no permanent damage was done to the hangar of the aircraft. Indeed, many foam agents are formulated to be biodegradable and have very low toxicity. This helps prevent environmental contamination from firefighting runoff or accidents like the one seen in Tulsa. The only other major drawback to foam fire suppression is that it can make search and rescue operations very difficult for fire crews. Indeed, just because a fire is extinguished does not mean all the people potentially trapped in the hangar have escaped. That's why it's so crucial that firefighters train alongside these foam systems to determine how they can best enter a building and locate injured personnel. The most common approach is using hoses and water to dilute the foam, thus creating a path forward. And since the foam is specifically designed to cut off oxygen, it's imperative that these men and women work fast to save their comrades. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.